Okay, I've unpacked the new G80 multi-game from Vector Labs. And here's everything that came in the box. The, uh, the main board, which attaches to the CPU board of whichever game you're installing it in. I'm going to be installing it in a Star Trek game. And you have the wire harness header board, which goes in on top of the uh, original CPU card and you have a new spinner interface board which goes on the back of the spinner and of course you got a bag of the ribbon cable and various other cables to hook up to three sound boards together to uh, interface into the, uh, the multi-game board uh, this install seems to be straightforward and fairly simple. It requires removing some chips from the, the main board, a couple chips from the speech board, and you have to make a slight modification on all three of the sound cards. In the future, you won't need the sound cards when he comes out with the uh, new all-in-one soundboard. So if you don't have all of the uh, sound cards right now, hopefully it won't be too much longer. That option will be available and you won't even need the original soundboards. Uh, I have my laptop here with the instructions. Instruction manual is in a PDF format. Uh, very detailed. Uh, a lot of pictures, install pictures, showing you exactly what to do. Uh, you will need a little bit of soldering skills, but it's nothing more than just being able to solder a few wires. And that's about it. We're going to get started on the install and uh, see how it goes. Okay, first thing we need to do is to gain access to the G80 card cage. So what we have to do is unplug the connector on top. Here's the card cages. Right now I have a clay Calgale uh, multi-game installed so I don't have the, um, the ROM board in here. And uh, so what I have to do is basically take all the cards out, move the uh, XY boards to the far end of the cage. That'll give us room for the three sound boards and the MPU or the CPU board. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. So let's get to work and remove these boards. Okay, we now have the XY boards installed in the proper slots all the way in the back of the cage. So that part's done. Now we need to get to modifying the boards. Okay, the instructions say the next step is to remove speech board CPU. So here is the speech board. This is the CPU. The CPU is the 8035 chip. So we'll remove it and set it aside. Okay, the next step is to remove the speech chip from the speech board. Here's the speech board again, and this is the speech chip. So we're going to remove it and set it aside with the CPU chip. Okay, the next step is to reinstall the speech chip into the multi-game board. So here's the new multi-game board and the speech chip right here goes in this socket here which is right next to the crystal. You want to make sure you get the orientation of the chip correct. The chip has a little notch on the end. That little notch goes on the end next to the edge of the board opposite the crystal. So we'll install that chip now. Okay, the speech chip is installed now. So next step is to in, reinstall the speech CPU into the multi-game board. Alright, well the speech CPU goes in this socket right here, which is right opposite the speech chip. And the notch goes in this end right here, the end opposite from the speech chip. Okay. Now we have the 
the speech CPU chip installed. So that's all we do to this board for now. We'll set it aside. Now we need the G80 CPU board and we'll start removing chips on it. Okay, this is my G80 uh, Star Trek CPU board and right now it has the Clay Calgill uh, multi sega game installed on it which uh, has here's the data card which plugs into the Z80 socket and this is the Z80 chip that you you put in uh, this is where the security chip goes this is the security chip bypass and you also have a chip here at U15 which also came in Clay's kit uh, which I've believe it's the same as the original but he just uh, put it in the kit I believe because a lot of times that chip goes bad I could be wrong about that but anyway we no longer need this chip we no longer need a security chip and we need the uh, Z80 processor but I'm going to leave it on the multi game because I have a brand new processor uh, that I'm going to install so the next thing on the instructions tells us to remove the chip at U15. So that's what we'll do. We'll remove the chip here at U15. Next, we're supposed to remove the Z80 chip from U2. So what we are going to do is just remove the uh, Clay's multi-game board, which is socketed in the CPU chip at U2. Okay, next step. We've removed the security chip from the U21 socket. And since this has to had the clay kit installed, this has the bypass plug in that socket. So we need to just remove this plug. Okay. Next we're supposed to remove the EEPROM chip from U25. Well, since Clay's kit, you didn't need the, the EEPROM chip. At U25 has already been removed. I have it in case I ever needed it. I saved it from the install, but since this kit doesn't need it, well, it's already to go. So let's go to the next okay. step. The next step is to remove the SRAM chips at U26, U27, U28, U29. Okay, here's the board, and here is the chips. U26, 27, 28, and 29. We'll no longer need these chips so we remove them from the sockets and put them aside. Okay now with all the chips on the CPU board removed your board should look like this. Okay the next step is to reinstall the Z80 CPU chip into the multi-board card. So here is my new chip since I, I'm using a new one. Uh, this one doesn't have a notch but it's got a little indented dot on this end. So the notch or the indented end goes to the edge of the, of the card. So we'll install that chip. Okay now that we've installed the Z80 chip the multi-board is now complete. It has all the chips on it that's supposed to go on it. So now we can set this aside and go to the next okay, step. Okay, the next step we're going to have to get out the soldering station and in the bag with the, uh, the wire and plugs there is a little resistor. What we have to do is take that little resistor and piggyback it on top of this 100K resistor which is located on the CPU board uh, right here next to the Z80 socket. It's uh, this resistor right here. So what we have to do is take the resistor supplied with the kit, piggyback it on top of that and solder the leads to the end of the original resistor. Uh, not too difficult, so uh, let's go ahead and do it and see how it comes out. Okay, well, that turned out pretty good. 
all soldered on and should be good to go. Okay, back to the G80 CPU board. What we have to do now is take our soldering iron and pretend that the top of these, uh, the edge connector on the bottom of the board, pretend a little spot to solder a wire to for uh, number two, four, and five. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, our next step is to solder these three wires onto the edge connector on the bottom of the uh, CPU board. So in, in the bag with the, the cables, have this cable with a plug on one end and three bare wires on the other. Uh, the wires are brown, red, and orange. And what we're going to do is take our soldering on and we're going to solder each one of them onto these three terminals. Okay, we now have our three wires soldered onto the edge connector. So let's see what the next step is. Okay, the next step was to remove the piece of foam that was on the bottom of the multi-board that protects the, the sockets on the bottom. And you can take that piece of foam and use it to store your unused chips. So just push the legs of your chips real easily into the foam and that way you can hang on to these chips in case you ever need them for anything in the future. So the next step, we're going to take the new multi-game board and we're going to line up the pins for where the CPU and the security chip go and also uh, the smaller chip that we removed. As you can see, it's three sets of pins. And what to do is we'll have to line them up to go in this one, this one, and, and this one here. So the important thing is to make sure you get all the pins lined up before you insert them. Uh, it's easy to get them off one, one way or the other. So just take your time and uh, set it on there. And it should go fairly easy because they're machine type uh, socket pins so you can bend them but they don't bend that easily and they should line up pretty pretty easy in the sockets so let's go ahead and see if we can't get them lined up and installed on the board 